A high-speed car chase is happening in the middle of the city, only the person being chased is on a scooter. Takuya and Yuki attempt to escape through the city traffic on their scooter, but soon a helicopter arrives on their back. Takuya expertly maneuvers the scooter into the nearby tunnel to escape the helicopter, but even inside the tunnel there seems to be trouble. A strange monk glowing in purple stands between them and the exit. It all started a few hours ago, when Takuya, a private detective, rescued Yuki from what they call the organization. For normal people, the organization doesn't even exist. It's like the Illuminati secretly controlling all of our actions and monitoring us, except it is real. The organization had been experimenting on Yuki for some time now, and someone had paid Takuya to rescue her. He does just that. Takuya, however, wasn't expecting so much company, which brings us back to the purple glowing monk. The strange monk magically appears on top of their scooter and starts projecting red balls of death when suddenly Yuki snaps. She clutches Takuya firmly and out of nowhere an explosion occurs, evaporating the strange monk away. The entire street's traffic comes to a halt and Takuya can only gasp for air, unable to put together what just happened. There is no time to stop, however, as the organization's helicopter is still on their backs. Luckily, a truck comes by and opens up, allowing for Takuya and Yuki to enter and hide. They had managed to escape the organization. For now. So, who is Yuki and why was the organization looking for her? Three years ago, a massive explosion occurred in the country which leads to the death and or disappearance of several thousand people. The impact of the explosion left a massive hole that exists even today. The place is now called The Lost and is surrounded by mystery as so far as any survey team that has been sent to the location has returned dead. No one can enter The Lost. Yuki, however, is an exception. She is the only person who has survived the Lost explosion and so she was being experimented on by the organization. The organization was working with the help of Tamashi, or rather using them. Tamashi being the souls of the deceased victims of The Lost who seem to be trapped in the human world with strange powers similar to that monk. Eiji, the man who came to Takuya and Yuki's rescue and coincidentally is also the man who asked Takuya to rescue Yuki, explains the situation. He tells Takuya that a few days ago they had received a strange message when decoded it called out, Yuki, I'm waiting at the lost. It was from Yuki's father, meaning that he was still alive. Eiji requests Takuya to take Yuki to the lost. Despite the risks involved, Takuya agrees to take Yuki to the lost and the two set out. First though, Takuya heads straight to his friend Geek. Geek, as his name suggests, is a nerd and a massive fan of the J-pop band called SPR5. Geek is the one who has designed Takuya's indestructible scooter, so Takuya goes to get it fixed. While Geek is getting the scooter repaired, Yuki seems to be troubled. Not by the fact that she was alive, but by the fact that her father was alive too, and for so long she hadn't been able to do anything about it. She had started to blame the death of all those people in the lost on herself. Like a classic teenager, she is filled with emotion and runs away on her own into the city. Unable to find Yuki anywhere, Takuya quickly storms into the city. However, since he is still being tracked by the organization, he cannot move as freely as he wanted to. Moreover, not only did he need to find Yuki, he also needed to find a safe path to get to the lost. Takuya then calls his friend Yumiko, who has been in the organization for some time now, to ask for help. He practically demands her to give him the safest path to head to lost and, like a true detective, manages to find Yuki out by the end of the day. The girl was heading to lost alone. He promises her that he would help her no matter what and puts her back on the scooter. Just as the two head back, however, the organization manages to catch up once more. The helicopter arrives behind their back and the same weird monk ghost before them. The monk starts using his powers to throw the rubble around at them, despite incurring several injuries, though Takuya manages to keep the scooter balanced and charges at the monk. Yuki can't take it anymore, she can't see more people getting hurt at her expense. She wails in anger and regrets when suddenly a red charge emits from her body and suddenly a Tamashi is formed in her defense. Akira, her bodyguard who had died in the lost trying to protect her, appears guns blazing and blasts the monk out of existence. The excess rubble goes and hits the helicopter and it crashes as well, giving the duo a perfect opportunity to escape. Finally safe, the two head to the lost but their troubles are not yet over, as a strange kid appears at the middle of the street and uses some strange magical powers to crash the scooter. Takuya is thrown off the scooter and hurled to the cemented floor and off the road, while Yuki is carefully placed by the side of another van. From the van exits Yumiko. 
The strange boy orders the main lady, Suzuna, to take proper care of Yuki this time and restrain her well, and also asks her to kill Takuya while they are at it. When the strange boy is gone, Suzuna gives the same orders to Yumiko and leaves as well, warning her to not let her personal feelings come in the way of work. Yumiko, her assistant Kuta, and another member of the organization place Yuki on the van and head to finish off Takuya. Yumiko pulls out her gun, but she shoots the organization member instead. All of them then head to Yumiko's secret hideout, a worn down building in the middle of an abandoned city. Yumiko tries to persuade Takuya to stop his foolishness and forget about heading to the Lost, but being the dedicated person he is, Takuya refuses to go back on his words. He refuses to break the contract. Yumiko, who is quite obviously in love with the man, cannot seem to alter his mind. All she can do is provide them with a safe place to stay for the time being. However, the reach of the organization is beyond extraordinary. Within hours of them getting there, they have already been found. The whole building is already surrounded, so the four of them head to the sewers to find a proper escape route. Midway through their escape, however, the organization members manage to track them down there as well. Suzuna has already arrived there with her goons. Yumiko quickly opens up a secret compartment and pushes the three and tells them to escape while she holds off the crazy organization workers. The three of them run without a second thought and soon manage to find an escape route. Stairs leading outside. As the three race to the exit, suddenly a knife flies out of nowhere and stabs Kuta in the back. Within a second, he drops to the floor. He grunts and tells them to keep moving as behind them a random dude appears. The strange man ignores the injured Kuta altogether and pursues Yuki and Takuya with his blade. The man also appears to be a Tamashi and is glowing green. He can manipulate the knife on his hands to make as many clones as he likes. As expected, the man starts attacking the two. Fortunately, Geek manages to arrive on time with his truck and drive them away, but the strange man and his swords follow the truck at an alarming speed as well. With no other options, Yuki and Takuya head back to confront the guy and perhaps subdue him. Takuya manages to snatch the guy's knife in hopes that perhaps his soul was attacked there, but unfortunately, the Tamashi gets even angrier and starts attacking at incredible speed. Yet again, Yuki manages to summon Akira, who arrives guns blazing. The man starts firing at the Tamashi with pistols and eventually has to use a submachine gun to finish it off. Yet again, after escaping another near-death scenario, Yuki, Takuya, and Geek head to the Lost. Back at the sewers, Suzuna confronts Yumiko and wonders why she would destroy the all-knowing organizations for some guy. The answer is pointless, however, since Suzuna is about to kill Yumiko anyway. She shoots the girl twice, but before she could end her, she suddenly walks away, claiming that the power has awakened. An injured Yumiko trots toward where she sent Yuki and the group. She gives Takuya a call to see if he was okay and, after getting a positive response, she starts looking for Kyota. Takuya and the group, on the other hand, are deep into wandered territory on their way to the Lost. However, something is strange. On their way, they notice a poster of the concert of the band SPR5. One issue though, the band was all killed during the Lost incident. Geek, being the mega fan of SPR5, instantly recognizes this and points it out, but things are going to get weirder. The trio wanders around the place and stumbles upon the members of the SPR5 outside a concert hall arguing among themselves. One of the members, Yua Tan, who is rumored to have not appeared in the final concert of SPR5. Yua seems to be disgruntled at her team members and especially at her producer and storms off. Geek wants to go and help, but Takuya reminds him it's all some sort of an illusion because the SPR5 were long dead. The trio keeps moving ahead, but again and again find themselves at the same place before the SPR members arguing. They were stuck in a time loop of some kind. Unable to hold himself this time and hoping that somehow he can change the past, Geek goes after Yua to confront her and tell her to go and see her friend because if she doesn't go to the concert, she would regret it. Geek follows Yua all the way to her favorite place by the river and explains everything to her. The girl at first seems adamant and even explains that her producer had been making plans to break their band. He was speaking cryptically earlier, telling them that SPR5 was meant to disappear. Yua has accepted that fate and refuses to go, but soon Yuki appears there as well and forces Yua to face her friends and avoid that regret. She pulls her by her hands and takes her back to the concert hall. Takuya, on the other hand, gets suspicious of the producer and enters the concert hall to look for him, but the man is nowhere to be found. He was not there on the day of the Lost, meaning he was definitely behind all of this and perhaps linked to the organization as well. Outside though, Yua, with Yuki's help, finally meets up with her friends and apologizes. 
As the idol heads in for her concert, the surrounding changes, and they are all transported back to the real world on the path to the lost. Geek quickly checks the internet to see if the past had changed, but nothing had happened. The past was still the same. The ghost earlier was Yua's Tamashi, who was filled with regret that she couldn't face her friends, and with Yuki and Geek's help, she was finally able to face that regret. It didn't change the past, but she was now free. Frustrated, Geek feels a bit too overwhelmed to carry on the journey, so he stays back, but Yuki and Takuya continue toward Lost. The road to Lost, however, is filled with peril, and yet again the strange boy who almost killed Takuya appears and stops them in their tracks. The boy opens his hood, and, surprise surprise, it's Yuki's brother Suma. Suma also appears to have survived the Lost and is now evil for some reason. The boy commands his sister to return back to the organization and starts using his powers to torture Takuya. Yuki gets agitated and yells at her brother to stop. However, when he doesn't, she suddenly starts emitting a strange white light and a massive explosion occurs. The next thing we see is that Takuya is severely injured and being treated in a worn down hospital. Thankfully, Yuki is fine and is sitting outside alongside Eiji, Yumiko, and Geek. Geek gets really pissed at Eiji because he now realizes that the man had purposely sent Takuya to the Lost despite knowing that the place was very dangerous. Eiji, however, assures him that Takuya knew of the dangers, although now that Geek was involved too, he might need to find a safe house as well. Eiji offers to take Yuki and Geek to his place to hide from the organization while Yumiko takes care of Takuya until he is okay and meet them there. As Yuki, Geek, and Eiji head outside, they are stopped by two police detectives, Ryoko and Ayoama. The whole country was in shock after last night's explosion, and people were calling the event a second lost. The police had spotted only one vehicle going that way, and that was Yuki and Takuya. Eiji makes up an excuse and tells the police officers that Yuki and Takuya were college students on a date there, and also explains that her father passed away there, so Yuki wanted to go see it and was just caught up in the explosion. Ryoko, although not convinced, lets them go, promising to visit them soon. Elsewhere, a really cool magician named Yoshiaki, whose powers include his ability to be able to erase anything from existence, is giving his magic show. The man is the David Blaine of anime, and can do a lot of tricks, but his main thing is erasing stuff. After finishing his show, Yoshiaki goes to his office, where Hidaka, a private detective, is waiting for him. The detective offers him help to search for his long-lost brother, in exchange for some serious cash, of course. After swindling the magician with his sweet talk and some evidence, Hidaka goes back to his agency where Ryoko is waiting for him. Wow, we have a theme going on here, haven't we? Ryoko was an old acquaintance of his and asks him about the man driving Yuki to the lost, Takuya. After that, Ryoko goes to visit Yuki once more at Eiji's place to know what exactly was going on and manages to get as much info as she can from Yuki. Turns out, Ryoko's parents had died in the Lost as well, so the two girls find common ground in their loss. Yuki reveals how she had been experimented on by Lacuna Chemicals, a massive company in the country which deals with different scientific experiments. Ryoko heads straight to the company to interrogate, but the company people do not intend to talk or let them enter unless they have a warrant. If that wasn't fishy enough, here comes the more sus part. When Ryoko returns back to her office, her boss reprimands her and removes her from the case once and for all. However, Ryoko knows that this only happens when someone is close to the truth. She had seen too many detective movies to stop now and starts researching even deeper into the case. Lacuna Chemicals had one major rival during the day, and during The Lost, that company was obliterated with all its assets destroyed. Ryoko finds out that Lacuna Chemicals purposely lured the other company into buying all its assets in the Lost Impact Zone. Ryoko and her assistant, Aoyama, head to the abandoned zone to see if they can find any written proof, and soon, in one of the buildings, Ryoko finds the papers showing how Lacuna pulled out of buying the properties at the last moment, making the other company fall for its tricks. Just as Ryoko gets the paper she was looking for, her assistant walks to her and plunges a knife onto her back. Aoyama was also at the organization. Apparently, everyone is. Even your mom. He snatches the paper from Ryoko and leaves her to die. Back at the hospital, Kazuya wakes up and straight away asks Yumiko about Seiji, the producer for SPR5. Suspiciously enough, the man was killed in an accident the very same day. The plot was getting thicker and Kazuya was still weak, but he decides to get up and get on with the job. The next day, Hidaka is dwindling over the death of Ryoko. 
Turns out that Ryoko died and her assistant Aoyama was also found dead in the nearby harbor. Just then, Yoshiaki, the magician, comes to his office to ask about the details of his brother that Hidaka promised. Hidaka, who now fully suspects that Takuya is part of the organization, since researching about him got Ryoko killed, sends Yoshiaki to him. They plan to see how the man was involved and use that information to find Yoshiaki's brother. Yoshiaki manages to track down Eiji's house, where Takuya and the gang are hiding out from the organization. He goes up to meet with Takuya and asks for help to find his brother. Yoshiaki's brother, Tsubasa, is the famous leader of the infamous Phantom Thieves Brigade crew, who used to pull major heists on expensive jewels and gems. Most of these heists were done for the organization to gather gems called artifacts which could be used to enhance magical powers. Suma was using a similar artifact when he last attacked Takuya and Yuki near the Lost. Yoshiaki explains that a similar artifact was found nearby and the Phantom crew would definitely try to get it. He asks for the help or practically blackmails them to help him, stating that otherwise he would leak their location to the media. With no other choice left, the whole group, Takuya, Yuki, Geek, Eiji, and Yumiko, head to the location where the artifact was placed. As expected, the Phantom crew is there as well, but oddly so, Tsubasa doesn't seem to be among them. Unfortunately for them all though, the artifact has already been taken by Suma, who is patiently waiting for them to arrive at the scene. A fight breaks out between the Phantom crew and Suma for the artifact. Sumo with his powers is too much for the Phantom crew to beat. He practically bullies them, hanging one of their members by the clock tower and taking the rest of the members' attack like a boss. Backup soon arrives for the Phantom crew. Takuya, Yoshiaki, and Yuki arrive to face their foe once and for all. Yuki summons Akira, and the battle truly begins. At first, Akira manages to humble a cocky Suma who wasn't even focused on the battle. With his several guns, Akira manages to break the artifact that Suma was carrying, effectively weakening him several fold. Suddenly, the villain gets serious. He takes out the other artifact that was just stolen from the place and summons his own Tamashi. It's Tsubasa! Tsubasa appears to be completely under the control of Suma. Suma orders Tsubasa to deal with Akira and Tsubasa does exactly that. The man seems to have grown in power after becoming Tamashi and obliterates Akira with his attacks. After finishing with Akira, Suma commends Tsubasa to kill his brother. The Tamashi, despite being in full control of Suma, refuses to attack his brother. Suma watches in frustration as the Tamashi's attacks purposely miss his brother. Just then, one of the Phantom Brigade members strikes Suma on his hand, separating him from the artifact. Yoshiaki quickly grabs the artifact and with a nod to his brother, does what he does best. He erases the artifact from existence. With both his artifacts gone, Suma collapses to the floor and Yuki grabs onto her brother just in time. Tsubasa, having now realized that his brother Yoshiaki was safe, finally manages to find peace and his Tamashi also evaporates into the sky. After the whole fiasco is done with, Suma is now taken under the care of Eiji. Hidaka also confronts Takuya and apologizes about tracking him and mistaking him for an organization member. Yoshiaki finally reveals his past. In the past, he and his brother were part of an orphanage school called the Light of Hope Academy. He remembers being taken away from the place and being experimented on by Lacuna. Hearing the name of the school, Takuya decides to go and investigate it. Takuya, while working with Yumiko and their boss, Kalibara, had once investigated the place as well, so he knew there was some link with the organization they could find there. Takuya, Yoshiaki, and Hidaka head into the torn down and abandoned district and reach the Light of Hope Academy. As soon as they enter the gate, they hear a loud high-pitched sound. They're sucked into a time rift. The group is then approached by a bunch of kids, all of whom Takuya is familiar with, and soon the head caretaker Hinako appears. Takuya was once working there as a double agent to investigate the child abuse allegations that surrounded the place. Hidaka asks how they can get out of the time rift, and Takuya explains that it's only possible if they dispel the regret surrounding the place. The source of the regret is Takuya himself. Turns out that, while undercover, Takuya tried his best to give the children hope for their future, but all of his attempts to make the children feel better were shut down by Hinako, or that's what he thought. The principal of the place was the one not allowing the dreams of hope and future to arise in the minds of the children. He was also forcing Hinako to do the same. Takuya had confronted Hinako about this, but she had turned a blind eye, always with regret. Takuya was deep into the investigation at the place, but was suddenly stopped by his boss Kaibata. 
the man was to pull out of the investigation for no apparent reason. Eventually, the children in the school were invited to attend a circus show. However, Takuya refuses to go. Furthermore, the timing of this event is aligned with the lost incident, meaning that the children and Hinako all died during that circus event. The Takuya from the present then tries to stop Hinako, but she resolves herself to tell the kids the truth about the school when they return from the circus. In her final moments, the woman had decided to help the kids no matter what the principal said, and perhaps save them from the abuse as well. The time rift starts to disappear, just like her regret, and she leaves Takuya with the words, clean the birdhouse for us. From a birdhouse in the backyard of the school, finds a finance log by Hinako that had inscribed many deposits from the Lacuna Chemical Laboratory. Once Takuya returns to Eiji's home, he learns that the principal of the academy isn't dead, but may be working in Lacuna presently. The financial documents claim that Lacuna was paying the academy significant money for providing them with children to experiment on. That was proof enough to now go ahead and take down the place. A magnificent magical performance on live television by Yoshiaki is monitored by Yuki, Geek, and Takuya. For his final trick, he proclaims to the audience that he'll make an entire building disappear. The building that's chosen from a magical random draw is the Lacuna Chemical Laboratory. The disappearance performance is set into motion. Camera crews and news reporters surround the factory, while Takuya, Geek, and Yuki infiltrate the building with a fake ID card. Geek uses his livestream account to stream the already in progress infiltration. To further solidify their claim that Lacuna was doing human experimentation, the three head deep into the facility, revealing several pieces of equipment to prove so. They then manage to find the principal of the Light Academy working for Lacuna and start interrogating him. Just as Takuya and the group confront the principal to the Light of Hope Academy, they're attacked by cloaked figures that cause the livestream to be cut short. However, the cloaked figures are dealt with and the news about the Lacuna Chemical Laboratory has gone viral. Finally, with no choice left, the corrupt officers of the country take the leader of Lacuna Factory, Taiyu, into custody. The man is taken to the local police station alongside Suzuna and his assistant Tsuki. While on the way, Tsuki is pissed that they let Suma go. However, Taiyu reveals that it was all part of the plan. As soon as they are taken into the police station, a higher-up comes by and apologizes and lets them leave. While Suma's condition back at Eiji's place starts to worsen, he starts to convert into a large grotesque monster. That not being all, the effects of this condition will cause him to create another lost incident, one bigger than the last. Yuki resolves to stop Suma and is brought to close proximity to his location by Takuya. Using her Tamashi, Yuki flies to Suma's location and breaks through Suma's defenses with the help of Akira. She manages to get up close to him and after the two embrace one another, Suma explodes, leaving Yuki devastated. Thankfully, the lost event didn't happen again, but Suma is dead. Now let's go into a flashback to set everything straight. Just what the hell is happening in this anime? Daichi, Yuki, and Suma's father was a very prestigious scientist and had proposed the theory of alternate universes and how people could travel them. He worked under Lacuna Chemicals long before. However, there is something really sus about the guy. While in the cafeteria of Lacuna Chemical Laboratory, Daichi is approached by Detective Negishi and his partner, a young Hidaka. They question him about the remains of three men and women found in the vicinity that are connected to him somehow. What's more strange is how the autopsy analysis said to have died 50 years ago, and one of the men has the same DNA records as him. To this, Daichi questions the detective's motives for such an asinine statement. The comments were not asinine, however. Daichi, Taiyu, and Tsuki were the three people who had died 50 years ago. The Daichi we saw before us now were here from another parallel universe that was on the brink of destruction. These three were tasked with making a portal to the other universe to save the people there. Now that Daichi had finally gotten into the factory with all the resources they need, all that was needed is to take over the company. Tsuki and Taiyu assassinate all the directors of the company until Daichi is placed at the top and the man then focuses all the company's resources on creating the portal to the next universe. During this time, however, Daichi meets with Yuki's mom and they fall in love. Taiyu tries to warn him to stay away from the girl, but Daichi is smitten by her. Something about her nonchalance makes him very calm and he eventually ends up marrying her. Fearing that he will have to return to the next universe, Daichi delays the construction as much as he can. The delayed constructions, however, come at a cost as Taiyu and Tsuki continue their child experimentations to test if they can enter the portal or not. 
Soon Yuki and Suma are born, two children of both universes, the Anomalies. Taiyu is pissed at Daichi, but there's nothing he can do now. Soon, the day of the portal's opening arrives, but Daichi realizes that Taiyu has done something with the machine. Instead of acting as a portal, it's acting as a bomb. Taiyu is planning to end this universe so that the other could survive. The portal explodes, and this was the Lost. In present, all of the charges surrounding Lacuna Chemical Laboratory have been dropped due to insufficient evidence. Meanwhile, Eiji relays to Yuki how the giant hole made by the Lost incident is growing in size. The Lost wasn't over yet, it was expanding and could soon consume the entire world. Taiyu, on the other hand, also concludes that Daiichi is somehow alive and is preventing the Lost from expanding. Although Taiyu hoped to see either Yuki or Suma as a replacement to the portal, he concludes that eliminating Daiichi would be their best option. He plans on doing so by entering Lost himself. Elsewhere, Yuki and Takuya are disclosed of the adverse effects of coming into close proximity to the Lost area. It's implored that the two not get close to Lost, as Taiyu, the President Lacuna, will stop or even kill them as he's trying to communicate with someone there. Back at the Lacuna, Taiyu accelerates the human experiments to make an antidote to entering the Lost. After multiple failed experiments on poor supernatural children, Tsuki volunteers herself. Tsuki is able to handle the minor effects of the surge particles, however, it takes a grim turn when Taiyu increases the output of the experiment. The madman finally makes an antidote to enter the Lost at the cost of Tsuki. At the beach, Yuki and Takuya have a heart-to-heart -heart and talk about what it is to have a normal life. Later, the two get on Takuya's scooter and head for Lost. En route on Takuya's motorbike to the Lost area, Yuki and Takuya spot Suzuna from the Lacuna Chemical Laboratory talking with some police officers. It's suspected that she and Taiyu plan on going to Lost as well. Elsewhere, Yumiko and Kuta, who was alive somehow, after we assumed him dead in the very first episode, are on reconnaissance watching over a lacuna antenna that'll be hacked by Eiji. A flashback reveals that the antenna will help maintain the sanity of Takuya and Yuki when they're in Lost. While infiltrating Lacuna, Kuta and Yumiko run into two cloaked guards who try to stop them, but Yuji and Keigo intervene, allowing them to progress. Back to Yuki and Takuya, who reach a roadblock, they get help from the Phantom Thief Brigade and Yoshiaki, who gives them some communication devices. Eventually, the two find Suzuna, who is near death after trying to betray Taiyu. The girl had waited all her life to try and kill Taiyu as revenge for all those children they experimented on. However, she had failed. Before she dies, Suzuna confesses her regrets for being a part of Yuki's torment. With the help of Kana, a member of the Phantom Brigade, Geek is able to hack into the antenna, allowing Takuya and Yuki to be able to enter Lost. As the two enter the subspace-like area, Yuki has flashbacks involving Yua and Ryoko making her believe that she's weak. However, Yumiko dissuades Yuki of that notion. On the other hand, Takuya suffers from his own past regrets, and communication between them and Eiji's group is practically lost. Meanwhile, Taiyu makes it to the lowest point of Lost and confronts Daiichi, whose personality is uploaded to a series of computers. Not wanting to waste any of his valuable time, Taiyu proceeds to delete his former partner in order to perfect the portal to Lost. Back to Yuki and Takuya, their memories of theirs that involve each other start to intertwine, which allows them to regain their focus. They then head deeper in Lost and arrive where Taiyu is as he tries to kill Daiichi. Yuki then summons Akira to try and stop him. Yuki uses the summoned Akira to attack Taiyu, however, he's impervious to the attack. Taiyu then continues his attacks on Daiichi, but the man somehow manages to escape his grasp. In retaliation, Daiichi encases Taiyu in a box to cut off his mutual communication support. Daiichi then reveals that Yuki is the bridge connecting multiple universes. This was the reason that he had called her here. She had the power to choose between worlds. Yuki could choose a world where all of the bad things that happened simply didn't exist. She could choose a perfect world for all of them. However, Yuki at the end doesn't want to choose a better universe. She doesn't want to devalue all the hardships and sorrows that she had suffered in this world. Yes, she had lost a lot, and so had all the people in the world, but she says that she cannot hide from the future. She refuses her father's proposal of a better world because she can live on her own and face the sorrows to build a better world for herself. Just then, Taiyu, now in a monstrous form, captures Daiichi. Yuki's attempt to free her father fails, and right when Taiyu tries to finish him off, a bullet shard lodged in his heart stops him. The bullet shard was from when Suzuna tried to kill him, but he, in turn, supposedly killed her. 
On the contrary, Suzuna was still alive, but only for a brief time. With one of the guns that Akira left behind, Yuki, with the help of Takuya, uses it to kill Taiyu. They then escape lost as the entire area starts to implode. On the surface, the members of the Phantom Thief Brigade, Yoshiaki and Geek, find the unconscious body of Yuki. However, Takuya is nowhere in sight. Time goes by. Eiji, Kikyu, and Geek start up their own company that involves Lost. Yuki now goes to school full-time and seems to have lost all memory of the incidents and even Takuya. Finally, Takuya is shown to be alive. He even gets close to reconnecting with Yuki, but knowing that this might trigger her memories, most of which she would probably like to forget, he decides to leave. If you enjoyed the series, don't forget to leave a like and comment to help the channel out. Thanks for watching!